Hello friends, today we are gonna complete our full stack video sharing app using React, Node.js, MongoDB and Firebase. This is the homepage, it will fetch some random videos from MongoDB using a backend API. We will be able to log in or register using this form and also we can log in using a Google account. To do that we will be implementing Google Firebase authentication. Let's click on any video card here and this page shows the video and its details. Right now we can like or dislike the video, we can see all its comments and add a new one. And also we can subscribe to any channel. In this case if I click on the subscription button here, it's gonna bring all the videos of the channels that I have subscribed to. And there is a explore button and it brings the most trending videos. By the way, when we open up any video, there will be a recommendation section here and it will suggest the most relevant videos using the tags of the current video. And then we will create the search functionality and it will fetch the videos with the same keyword in their titles. And finally, we will create this pop-up component and we will be able to upload new videos. And all these files will be stored in Google Firebase Storage. It's an awesome project where you can learn how to create REST API, make complex API requests using cookies, provide security using JWT, React hooks, Firebase, Redux Toolkit and more. I hope you will like it. If you want to see more tutorials like this, please like the video. If you are ready, let's get started. Ok, if you created a new folder, let's create our backend server. To do that I'm gonna create one more folder here and it's gonna be server or API or whatever you want. And inside this server I'm gonna create my express API. To do that firstly I should initialize my node application. I will come here and say cd server. I'm inside this folder right now and I will say npm init and I will say dash y and it's gonna create package.json here. Let's check, as you can see it's here. And inside this package I'm gonna install my dependencies. To do that you can use npm install or yarn add. And first dependency will be express server. And also I'm gonna add nodemon. It's gonna allow us to listen our application and finally I will say mongoose. So we will be able to connect to the MongoDB and make crude operations. Of course we are going to install some other libraries but for now I'm going to install them and it's ready. As you can see they are here and I'm going to create here my index file. I will say index.js. Let's import express. If you are using Node.js you are doing this by writing const express require express but I don't want to use this structure it's kind of old as you can see it says it may be converted to AS module we are gonna do that and I will say import express and from express but if you do that it's gonna give you an error to prevent this I will come here and say type and we are gonna use AS modules like that. I will save and right now everything is okay. Let's create our application. I will say const app and I'm gonna use express function here like that. Of course to run this application we should listen a port number. I will say app dot listen and I'm gonna write here any port number. I'm mostly using this number. Of course you can use any other port numbers but make sure that any other applications are not using that. And here I will say console log connected. Okay it's ready but how we are gonna run our application. I'm gonna use node mode here otherwise for any changes you have to come here and say node index.js 
but if you run this application with Nodemon, it's gonna listen our application, we are gonna run it once and we won't have to run it again and again. Let's say start is gonna be our starting script and I will say Nodemon index.js. Let's try npm start or yarn start. As you can see, it's connected. If I make any changes here, it's going to be immediately in the console. Let's change this back. And right now I'm going to connect to my DB. To do that, you can go to cloud.mongodb.com and after that you are going to see this page. Of course, if you don't have any cluster, firstly you should create your free cluster. You don't have to pay anything, it's totally free. And after that, you are going to see this page. Of course, there is something important here. To reach our DB, firstly, we should create a user here. Let's say llama and password will be the same. As you can see, we are able to read and write to any DB. Of course, you can add custom roles, but we are going to be an admin. I'm going to create. And one more thing, I'm going to click here, network. And as you can see, there is an IP list here. If you don't add here any IP, you won't be able to reach your DB. I'm going to click here. If you click on this button, it's going to add your computer IP here. If you click here, you will be able to reach it from any location and any computer. Of course, if you deploy your application, you should write here your server IP. But we are using localhost. It can stay like that. It's going to take a while. And I'm going to go to DB again. And as you can see, there is a connection button here. And I'm going to choose connect your application. And as you can see, this is going to be our secret key, which includes our username and password. I'm going to use it. And let's create here our connect method. Of course, we are going to need mongoose. Let's import. And I will say const connect. And I'm going to use mongoose and connect method. And inside, I'm going to paste my secret URL. But it's not a good idea to share your connection string here. That's because when you share your code on GitHub or any other website, everyone can see your username and password. To prevent this, I'm going to create here env file. Dot env. And I'm going to write my connection string here. Let's say mongo. And this URI. Of course, I'm going to change this password. It's going to be llama again, and I will save. But how we are going to use this env file? To do that, we are going to need one more library. I will say yarn add dot env. Let's import this dot env, and I'm going to make its configuration. Otherwise, it's not going to work. I will say .env and config. We can use it right now. I will say process.env and my variable name, which is Mongo. By the way, I forgot here. Parentheses. Okay. And after that, I will say then if everything is okay, right here, connected to db. I will save and if there is any problem I will catch this I will say error just throw this error like that I'm gonna shrink this a little bit okay it's ready I'm gonna copy this function name and call it here then we run our application it's gonna automatically connect to mongodb I'm gonna save and as you can see Connected, connected to DB. Let's say connected to server. Like that. Perfect. Right now, let's create our collections as we did here before. As you can see, hotels, rooms, users. And let's decide what we are going to need. Firstly, we are going to need a user. And this user will be a channel at the same time. And we are going to have video collection and comments collection. Let's create. I will come here and create new folder. It's going to be models. 
and first one will be user. I'm gonna import mongoose again and I'm gonna create user schema. I'll say const user schema and new mongoose and schema and first property will be username and again remember it's gonna be our channel at the same time when we log in we will be able to upload new videos or comments with this channel so I will say type will be string and I will say required and it's gonna be true it's required because we cannot create any user without username and finally I will say unique and it's gonna be true also so nobody can create same user with the same name and one more property and it's gonna be email it's gonna be exactly the same string required and unique let's create one more it's gonna be password required but it doesn't have to be unique what else I'm gonna say image it's not required they don't have to have this image and what else we are gonna have subscriber numbers let's say subscribers type will be number and by default when we create our channel it's gonna be zero and one more and it's gonna be subscribe channels or users let's say users and I'll say type and I'm gonna use here an array and in this array we are gonna add all users that we have subscribed so it's gonna be string basically when we create our channel it's gonna be an empty string when we subscribe any channel it's gonna be that channels user ID you can do the same thing here you can say array and string and you can add user IDs but we won't need that that because in the video page we are gonna see only channel name and its subscriber numbers but we are gonna need them here that because in the home page we should see videos that belongs our subscribed users that's why we are storing them and I'm gonna write one more thing here and it's gonna be timestamps I'll say true basically it's gonna create creation and updated date of this user okay let's export this I will say export default I'm gonna use mongoose and model and our model name will be user if you check here as you can see users rooms hotels basically when we create any name here it's gonna make it plural and finally I'm gonna write here my schema it's gonna be user schema like that so let's create others I'm gonna copy here and create one more model here it's gonna be video of course I'm gonna change this name it's gonna be video and video schema and I'm gonna delete here okay firstly a video should have a user ID when we upload any video it's gonna add here our user ID it's gonna be string and required I'm gonna delete here what else we are gonna have video title again string and required video description video image it's gonna be our thumbnail and video URL we are gonna upload our videos in Google storage and we are gonna store here its URL and what else we are gonna have video views it's gonna be a number and at the beginning default is gonna be zero and we can write here video text I will say type it's gonna be an array and I will say string if you don't write anything like that let's duplicate this twice and this one will be likes and dislikes comma here and here and that's all I think it's gonna include again user IDs who like our videos and dislike our videos 
and that's all i'm gonna copy here and one more model here and it's gonna be comments let's paste and change its name comment and let's delete them and again we are gonna have a user id and i'm gonna write here which video we are commenting so we are gonna store here video id and finally our text let's say description and that's all nothing else we cannot add any image or something to our comments but how we are gonna add new user video and comments to our db to do that we are gonna need our roots let's create one more folder here roots basically we are gonna say localhost our port number and api and let's say videos and any video id here when we do that it's gonna fetch all those videos in our db and return their names descriptions images videos whatever so we are gonna need those roots here and finally we are gonna have one more folder here and it's gonna be controllers basically we are gonna make all crude operations in these controllers adding new video deleting updating anything it's gonna be inside this folder so i'm gonna close everything here and create my first root and it's gonna be users root let's create others also actually videos and comments and here i'm gonna create my controllers let's say user video and comment if you have never created any api with express server don't worry you are gonna understand why we are separating them like that just wait i'm gonna close them and let's create here something and you are gonna understand better i'm gonna import express again and i'm gonna create my user router i will say const router and it's gonna be express and router function like that and we are gonna use this router in our index.js basically i'm gonna export this i will say export default and router let's write here any root and i will be able to explain better i will say router get method because we are gonna fetch data and i'm gonna write here any endpoint let's say test and i'm gonna write here my controller function let's create here something i'll say const test function and i will say console log test is working let's call this function here test of course we should export this i'm gonna call again as you can see it's here i'm gonna enter but before as i said we are gonna define this in our index.js i'm gonna call my user root i will say import user roots you can write here whatever you want because we are exporting as a default and from my user root here roots and users.js so i can use it right now and i will come here and i will say app.use and which endpoint we are going to use we are using api and after collection name so basically it's going to be api users and we are going to use this root by the way there is a mistake somewhere okay i forgot here dot js i'm gonna save again okay it's connected let's try i will say api users and test i'm gonna enter it's not gonna return us anything but as you can see test is working so we are able to make any request right now but how we can send here something it's really easy basically we are gonna have here request response basically request is what we are getting from user 
and this is what we are sending to user. Let's say response JSON, and I will say it's successful. Let's see right now, as you can see, it's here. We can send anything to user. We are going to send users, we are going to send videos, comments, everything. It works like that. So I'm going to do the same thing for others. Let's delete this actually, we are not going to need it. I'm going to copy this and paste for comments. It's going to be comments. Of course, we don't have any test yet. And videos. By the way, it's going to be comment, not comments. And let's define them here. I will do exactly the same thing. Video root and comment root. Let's use them here. Video and comment. Okay. I'm going to delete here. And let's think what we are going to need first. Firstly, we are going to create a user. But I'm not going to do this here. That's because authentication is the most important part of an API. And I think it should be separated. So I'm going to create here one more route. And it's going to be authentication. And let's create controller. And again. I will copy this and paste here. And inside index, I'm going to import this. And here, let's try it at the beginning. By the way, ah, OK, I'm going to save. And that's all. I'm going to close everything and open up my authentication route. And I'm going to write here what requests I want to make. Firstly, I will say create a user. It's going to be sign in. And one more is going to be Google authentication. That's because in our application, we are able to create a user using username, email, and password. And also, we will be able to use Google Authentication and sign in using our Google account. Let's create our routes. I will say. And it's going to be a post method. That's because we are sending our information. Remember, username, email, and password. And our endpoint will be sign up. And here, we are going to call our controller. But we don't have yet. We are going to create. And I'm going to duplicate this and move it here. And it's going to be sign in. Again, it will be post. We are sending our username and password. And one more is going to be, let's say, Google. Let's separate them. And I'm going to come here and create my functions. I will say export const sign up. And remember, we are taking request from user and sending response to user. So how we are going to create new user? To do that, of course, we are going to use MongoDB. Basically, I'm going to import Mongoose and I'm going to create my user here. Of course, if you are making any request to MongoDB, your function will be async. That's because it's going to take a time. And here, I will try to create a user. To do that, I'm going to use try catch block because it can be an error here. If there is an error, we are going to handle it later. Let's say to do. And I will say const new user. And I'm going to use my user model. Let's import this here like that. And I'm going to write here its properties like username, email and password. But how we are going to take those information? We cannot do this in here. We cannot send any data. To do that, we are going to need a making API application. There are many options that you can use Postman, Insomnia, VS Code REST, or others. But recently, I'm using Insomnia. 
I really like this application, so we are gonna use it. I will come here and create new collection. Let's say video app. And here I'm gonna create new folder. I wanna make everything well organized. So let's say authentication. Auth. I will create and inside this folder, let's say new request. And it's gonna be sign up. And remember which method we are using is gonna be a post method. And I'm gonna write here my URL. Localhost API and authentication and how we are gonna send our information. I'm gonna come here and choose JSON and right now I'm able to change any information. First one will be name. Let's say test. We are gonna need email. Let's say test gmail.com and one more is gonna be password. Like that. Right now I'm able to send all this information but how I'm gonna take it here. Remember we have choose body here. So it's gonna be request and body. And it's gonna take everything that we sent inside body. Let's actually try. I'm gonna comment this out and I will say console log request and body. I'm gonna call this function in my router like that let's try i'm gonna send cannot post because i forgot here my endpoint i'm gonna send again as you can see it's not returning anything but here as you can see there is an error we cannot see our username password email that because we didn't allow our application to take any json file from outside to prevent this I'm gonna come here and say app use express.json I'm gonna save and let's try again I will send and right now as you can see all these informations are here I'm gonna close sidebar as you can see perfect Right now we can use them, but as you can see, we are able to see our password here. We cannot store this in this way, it's not secure. Basically, we are gonna encrypt this password. To do that, we are gonna use bcrypt library, and it's gonna be bcrypt.js. Let's import this, like that, and I'm gonna delete here, and open up my try catch block, and I will say take everything inside body we are using spread operator here to take every property but i want to change its password but how we are gonna encrypt it let's come here as you can see usage we are gonna create a salt and hashed password let's do that we are gonna understand better right now i will paste here of course, we are not gonna use var, it's gonna be const. And here, I'm gonna write what I want to encrypt. It's gonna be request, body, and password, which we sent here. And it's gonna hash it, and we can use it here. It's not gonna be what we sent, it's gonna be this hashed password. Okay, we created our new user, but how we are gonna save this to MongoDB? It's really easy, I will say new user dot save that's all of course we are gonna use await here that because it's an async function and we are making async operation here and finally after saving i will say response status is gonna be 200 successful and i will say send or json doesn't matter user has been created let's see i hope everything is okay i'm gonna send as you can see user has been created if i go to mongodb as you can see our db here and users let's check okay perfect it's here and all those properties 
but if there is an error, what we are gonna do? Basically, you can say response send and this error, but I wanna make more specific error handling. To do that, we are gonna use one more middleware here. I'll say app.use. If you watched my previous project, you already know, but I'm gonna explain again. It's not gonna be that deep, but I will say error request response and next. Basically, this is how we are handling errors in Express Server. It's a middleware, it takes four parameters, error, request, response, and next, and we can send any specific error to user here. Firstly, I'm gonna define my status, my message, and I'm gonna send to user. Const status is gonna be error.status, and if we don't send any specific status, it's gonna be just 500. One more, it's gonna be message. If there is no specific message, we will say something went wrong. Of course, not comma, semicolon. And let's return this to user. I will say return response status it's gonna be our specific status here, and I'll say JSON or send, and you can write here whatever you want. If you want to, you can just send your message, but I want to make it a little bit better, so I will say success, false, status again, our status, and message will be our message. Of course, after AS6, we don't have to write them like that, if you are using same key and value, basically you can write just one of them and it's gonna be exactly the same thing. Okay, right now we can use it everywhere. Let's come here. Right now we can use next here and I can use it here. Let's say next error and I will save. Right now, if I try to sign up with same name and email, I will send. And as you can see, success false status and our message will be duplication error. That because we are using same name and email. It's that easy. But we can make this more specific. We can create our own errors. I will come here and create one more file here and I will say error. And as I said, if you want to get more information about error handling and middlewares, please watch my previous project, Manstag Booking Application, and you are gonna get more information there. And there are timestamps in the video, just check error handling section and watch it. Let's create our specific error handler, I will say const, of course it's gonna be export, we are gonna use it everywhere, and I will say create error. We are gonna take a status message and I'm gonna create here a new error. Const error, new error, and we are gonna change its status and message. It's gonna be our status which we sent here. I will do the same thing for message. And finally, we are gonna return this error. Right now, let's say create error. And error status, let's say 404, not font. If I try again, as you can see, it returns this specific error. Of course, we are not gonna use it here. It can stay like that. It's already clear. It says you cannot duplicate name and email. So we don't have to write it here. And that's all. It was our first root and controller. I hope you understood. If you understood everything by now, it's gonna be much easier right now. Okay, let's create other controller here. I will duplicate this 
and it's going to be sign in. Let's create our request here. New request is going to be sign in again. Post I will create and again localhost this URL, but this time it's going to be sign in. And inside body again, I'm going to choose JSON and send my name, test, and password. But as you realize, we are sending normal password here, but in our DB, this password is hashed. So basically, we are going to decode this password first. We are going to compare this user with this user. If they are exactly the same user, we are going to return our successful response. Let's do that. Firstly, I'm going to delete here. And firstly, I will try to find our user. I will say const user is going to be await our user model. And I'm going to use a MongoDB method here. And it's going to be find one. And I'm going to write my condition here. Name will be request body and name. Basically, it's going to look into user collection. Try to find one which has a name. And it's going to be test. And I can create an error here. If there is no user, we can send 404. I will say if there is no user, return next, create error. 404 and user not found. Let's try. I'm gonna come here and say test one. There is no user like that. I'm gonna send. Oops. I forgot writing here my sign in function. Like that. I'm gonna save and try again. And as you can see, user not found. And right now I'm going to compare my password if it's correct or not. I will say const is correct. Let's see how we are going to do this. As you can see, bcrypt compare our password and hashed password. If it's correct, it's going to return true. If it's not, false. I will say bcrypt.js dot compare. First one will be what we sent. Request body and password and second one will be the password inside our db remember we found this user we can use it user dot password and i will say if it's not correct we are going to return one more error let's copy this and i will say 400 and wrong credentials it's going to be test again, but I'm going to write wrong password. I'm going to send. Oops, there is something wrong. It's an async function, I think. Let's try. I will say await and send again. And as you can see, wrong credentials. So what if everything is correct? Basically, we are going to send our user information but at the same time, we are going to send an access token. It's really important, guys, that because in the future, when we try to delete our videos or upload any videos, make any comments, we are going to use that access token and we are going to verify our user. But how we are going to send it? Basically, we are going to use JSON Web Token. I will say yarn add JSON Web Token. Let's import this here. JWT from JSON Web Token and let's create here our token. I'll say const token is going to be JWT dot sign and you can send here any user information, its name, its ID, whatever. But make sure that it's a key information that you can verify your user. And the best thing is using here user ID. I'll say ID. It's going to be our user dot ID. I'm using underscore that because in our DB, as you can see, underscore ID, we are going to use it here. 
basically it's going to take our id and create a hash token and we are going to take this token and send to our user after login process and there is one more thing here we should provide any secret key here you can write whatever you want but let's not make this here as you remember we have an env file here we can write here any secret key let's say jwt and my key will be something like that let's use it here process env and jwt okay right now we have a token we can send it to user to do that we are gonna use cookies i will say response dot cookie and cookie name will be access token and we are gonna send our token we can write here any configuration let's say http only and it's gonna be true and it's gonna make our application more secure other third party scripts not will be able to use our cookie and after that i will say status by the way to use cookie we have to import one more library i will say yarn add cookie parser i'm gonna open index and import this and i'm gonna use it somewhere here i will say app dot use cookie parser like that okay let's continue 200 successful and we are gonna send this user i will say json like that let's save and see i will try send okay i forgot changing this it's a correct password right now i will send and as you can see all those informations are here and additionally we have a cookie and this is our hashed access token and remember it includes our user id we are gonna use this id to identify our user okay perfect but there's a problem here as you can see it reveals our password even if it's hashed we shouldn't send this password like that to prevent this i'm gonna get rid of my password before sending to user i will say const our user and i will say password and other details basically it's going to separate our user object password and other details everything apart from this password so we can send this so i'm gonna copy this and paste here but right now we are gonna have an other error let's try i'm gonna send and as you can see it's not exactly an error but it returns us many unnecessary things as you can see our user is still here but we don't need them to prevent this we are gonna use this document and i will come here and say user dot document like that let's try one more time i'm gonna send and as you can see everything is here but password perfect so we finished our controllers here of course we are gonna sign in with google also but we are gonna do this later that because we are gonna need a google button we cannot send it here using insomnia we are gonna take care of this after installing our client path okay we can sign up we can sign in so we can close this authentication actually i'm gonna close everything and let's take care of users so let's see what we are gonna have i'm gonna paste it here as you can see update late we are gonna get a user we will be able to subscribe any user or unsubscribe we can like a video and dislike a video as a user so let's create our roots i'm gonna write the first one it's gonna be a put method that because updating an existing user and my endpoint will be my user id so we are going to specify our user id here and according to this id we will be able to update our user actually let's create them here first 
update, request, response, and next. I'm going to delete this and I will create others. Update, delete, get a user, subscribe, unsubscribe, like and dislike. I can delete the rest. Okay, I can use them here right now. I will say update, let's create others. It's gonna be delete method. Again, we are gonna use this ID, get a user. It's gonna be a get method, but I'm gonna specify an endpoint here and it's gonna be find. It's gonna be users, find and specific ID here. Subscribe is gonna be put again. We are gonna update our user. Let's say sub and ID. And this ID will be the ID of the channel which we want to subscribe. I will do the same thing here. Unsubscribe, like a video. Let's say video ID actually. It's clearer. And finally, dislike. Okay, let's add our controllers. It's gonna be delayed. Okay, let's write it here. By the way, we cannot use delete as a name here, I think. So let's correct this. Delete user. Okay, get user, subscribe, unsubscribe, like and dislike. like that okay let's use them but there's an error here let's see what's that error delete user ah, okay delete but there's the important thing here as i said we have to verify our user first if we don't verify any user can update this user or delete or subscribe to any channel using this endpoint but how we are gonna verify our user I'm gonna come here and I will say verify token. We are gonna use JWT and I will say export const verify token. It's gonna be request, response, and next. And we are gonna take the access token from our cookie. Remember, when we sign in, we are taking this access token and we can use it here i will say const token request cookies and access token i will say if there is no token i can return my error i will say return next create error let's import this from error and inside i'm gonna send 401 status which is not authenticated and I'm gonna say you are not authenticated and I will write here one more condition we can have a token but it doesn't mean it's valid so we have to verify this I will say JWT and verify I'm gonna pass here my token and my secret key remember process EMV and JWT and this verification function is going to return us either an error or our information remember in the access token we have an user ID let's say here user you can write here whatever you want but I prefer using user and I will come here and say if there's an error it means our token is not valid and I'm going to return one more error here it's gonna be 403 it means okay there is a token but it's not valid so I will say token is not valid okay and if everything is okay we are gonna send this information I will say request and user equals user as I said you can write here whatever you want you can say info you can say data basically 
we are assigning this JWT object to our request and user. So we are able to use this request and user in any API request. We are going to understand better right now. And I will say if everything is OK, we are going to assign this user and I will say next. Basically, after verification, it's going to continue where we left. What I mean by that? If I come here and say verify token, it's going to be our middleware, which means whenever we make this API request, it's going to go to verify token function and it's going to check if everything is OK. It's going to assign our user ID here and we are going to continue what we want to do. In this case, we are going to run this update function and we are going to update our user. Let's create this controller and you are going to understand everything better. I'm going to come here and write my condition. Basically, I'm going to compare this user ID and this JWT ID. If they are equal, it means I'm the owner of this user. So I'm able to update it. If I try to update other user here using other user's ID, it's not going to match with our JWT user ID and we are going to send an error. Let's do that. I will say if request params and ID, which is this ID, equal request user dot ID. Remember, it comes from JWT and I'm going to write here my updating operation. If they are not equal, I'm going to send an error. I'll say return next create error for all three and I will say you can update only your account. OK, if everything is OK, I'm going to update my user, I will say try catch block. If there is an error, we are going to send it like that. I will say const updated user await. We are going to use user model here. Let's import models and user. Again, JS here. Don't forget this extension. And I will say find by ID and update. So basically, I'm going to pass in request params and ID and I'm going to find this user. And after that, I'm going to update. To do that, we are using set method and it's going to be request and body. And finally, we are going to send this user. I will say response status 200 JSON and updated user. By the way, again, I forgot extension and where else? Ah, OK, I said await, but I didn't use async here. OK, perfect. Let's try. I'm going to come here and create one more folder and it's going to be user, which means channel requests and insight. Let's say update user. It's going to be a put method. I will say localhost users endpoint and here I'm going to write my user ID. Let's check this user ID. I'm going to paste, but I'm going to change this. Let's add one, which means it doesn't belong to me. And let's say name is going to be updated. Let's send. As you can see, you can update only your account. If I delete this, our user will be updated. But as you can see, it's still test here. To prevent this, I'm going to write here one more option and it's going to be new true. Basically, it's going to return as the newest version of our user. By the way, it's not going to be response. Of course, it's going to be request. I'm going to send, as you can see, updated. If I delete this, let me show you one more time that because it was response. I'm going to change here and send. As you can see, it's not changing. But if I say leave true, it's going to be 
our updated name. Perfect. So it's easier to create others right now. I'm gonna copy here and paste for delayed user. And again, we are gonna compare users. If it's not our user, I will say you can delete only your account. If it's our user, we are just gonna delete it. Find by ID and delete. So we are not gonna need any set or new here. And we are not gonna need deleted users like that. And I will say user has been deleted. And again, async. Let's copy this for others. Otherwise I will forget again and again. Okay, let's come here and write same middleware for others for the late user. For getting a user, we don't need any verification that because even if we are not logged in, we will be able to see any user. But to subscribe any channel, we have to be logged in or for unsubscription, like video and dislike a video. Let's see. New request, delete user. I'm gonna choose delete method and localhost API users and our ID. Let's change this again. I'm gonna send. You can delete only your account. Let's change back. User has been deleted. If I check here, I'm gonna refresh. As you can see, it's not here anymore. Let's create others. Get a user, I will say, try catch block. Next, and this error. Actually, I'm gonna do the same thing for others. Like that. Okay, how we are gonna get user? It's really easy. I will say const user await user model and find my ID. And I'm just gonna use request, params, and ID. After finding this user, I'm just gonna send JSON and this user. For subscription, remember, we are taking ID here, but it doesn't belong to us. It belongs other channel. Let's remember our user model here. As you remember, we have subscribers, and subscribed users. Basically, we are gonna add this channel ID to our subscribed users array, and we are gonna find this other channel and increase its subscribers number. It sounds confusing, but you are gonna understand better. Basically, I will say, await user find by ID, and here I'm gonna use JWT ID, Remember, we have request, user, and we can use this ID. And I'm gonna add channel ID to my subscribed users array. To do that, we are gonna use push method. And I'll say subscribed users. And inside this array, I'm gonna add request params.id. Again, this is our user. This is other channels user ID. And also, we are gonna find this user and increase its subscribers number. So I will say await user find by ID and update. This time it's gonna be request params and ID. We are in the that channel right now and we are gonna increment its subscribers number. To do that, we are gonna use MongoDB increment methods and subscribers. And here one and that's all. Let's send our response to 100 JSON and I will say subscription successful. Like this. So I will do the same thing for unsubscription. I will come here and paste. This time it's not gonna be push, it's gonna be pull. We are gonna delete this user ID from this subscribed users array. And also, we are gonna decrease these subscriber numbers. So basically I will say minus one. 
and let's see oh, subscription successful so we can like and dislike any video but before let's create a video otherwise we won't be able to test it so i'm gonna close them and open up videos first one will be create a video router post method endpoint again it's gonna be verify token and controller name and it's gonna be add video let's create export const add video request response next and again i forgot async and i'm gonna create others update delete get a video delete get okay it's enough for now let's add this add video let's create others it's gonna be a put method of course we are gonna need video id here and delete method again and get and i'll say find id and i'm gonna delete here that because we don't have to log in to find any video and that's all let's create i'll say const new video new video model and inside i will say request body but before i'm gonna add one more thing and it's gonna be our user id when we upload any video we are gonna add it here request user and id and other request body let's save this try catch next error again i'm gonna copy paste this i don't wanna waste time okay and inside i'm gonna save this video i'll say const save video it's gonna be new video dot save of course await and i'm gonna send it successful and save video now we are gonna update it again we are gonna verify our id basically we are gonna find this video and we are gonna look inside this video and find user id and we are gonna compare this user id with our user id if it's equal we are gonna update if it's not we are gonna send an error i will say const video is gonna be await video find by id request params dot id and we can send here any error if you want you don't have to but let's say if there is no video return next of course we cannot use it like that i will say if and create error it's gonna be a 404 and video not found and right now i can compare user ids i will say if request user dot id equal video dot user id it means we are the owner we can update it const updated user await video find by id and update we are going to send here video id request params dot id or directly video id there's a typo here and i will say set method request and body whatever we want to change and also of course i will say new true like that let me close this sidebar and finally we are gonna send our user response 200 and updated video oops why i said user is gonna be video okay let's think what we are gonna need more when we visit video page in our client site we are gonna increment video views remember there is a view here 
and whenever we refresh the page we are gonna increase this so I will say put that because we are gonna update I will say view and video ID here what else we can do we can get trend videos it's gonna be get method trend we can get random videos when we go to home page we are gonna see those random videos what else we can see subscribe channels videos let's create them here by the way i forgot here writing else and i'm gonna return error for all three you can update only your video so i will do the same thing for delete i'm gonna copy here we don't need here i will say find by id and delete and uh, we don't need them i can clear you can delete only your video and i will say the video has been deleted and for this one, I'm just going to find the video and return. I'll say const video await video dot find by ID. It's going to be request params and video ID like that. And I'm going to return just video. Okay, let's create others. Add view. random trend and subscribed let's say sub let's call them here i will say add view trend random and subscribe videos okay let's create them it's really easy guys I'm gonna delete here video find by ID and update request params and ID increment use property just one the view has been increased that's all for random videos if you write here find it's going to sort those videos and bring to us, but I don't want to do this. I just want to get random videos. To do that, we are going to use MongoDB aggregate, and I'm going to write here sample. So basically, it's going to return us a random sample, but we can write here each size, and it's going to be 40 videos. We are going to test them later. Let's say videos and videos okay and uh, for trends we are gonna find videos but I'm gonna write here a sort method mongodb sort it's really useful I'm gonna write here my condition I will say look at video views bring me the most viewed videos like that if you say one is gonna bring the less viewed videos if you say minus one is gonna bring the most viewed it's gonna be videos and here let's check again we are this user there is a subscribed users array and in this array there will be many IDs we are gonna take all those IDs and we are gonna find all videos of these user IDs let's do that I'm gonna delete here and I will say const user firstly we are gonna find our user otherwise we cannot see that array I will say user find by ID and request user dot ID we can use this that because we are using verify token of course I didn't write let's write it here 
And after that, I'm going to find subscribe channels. Let's say const subscribed channels. And it's going to be user dot subscribe channels. Sorry, users. Let's check again. OK, subscribed users. And after that, I'm going to create a list and I'm going to create a promise loop. What I mean by that, I will say const list. I will say promise dot all. And I'm going to find every videos of those channels. That's why we are using promise here. We are not finding one channel. We are finding all those channels. And I say subscribe channels. And I'm going to use map channel ID. And it's going to return video dot find if user ID equal to channel ID. Of course, inside curly brackets like that. And after that, I'm going to return this list. I will say response status JSON. And I'm going to return this list. But there will be a problem here. Let's try actually. Firstly, I'm going to create some users. Sign up, test, test1, oops, test1 Gmail, test2, OK, it's enough. Right now, I'm going to create some video using this user. I'm going to sign in. We have a cookie right now and I'm going to create videos folder. Let's create new request. It's going to be add video post method. And I will say localhost. It's going to be videos. And I'm going to write here its properties. Let's say title the best video. Like my videos. <laughs> description, test description. And what else? Remember, image URL. Let's say test video URL. It's going to be the same. And what else we have? I forgot. Let's check. Title, description, image, video. We can add text, but it can stay like that. OK, let's create. OK, as you can see, it's here. And I'm going to sign in a second user and create one more video. The best video from second user. I will send. And one more. I'm going to sign in as a test three. Oops. We didn't create test, test one, test two. Oh, I'm sorry, test one. And I'm going to create the best video from, uh, let's say, first user. OK, right now I want to subscribe a channel. Let's create here a new request. Sub a channel is going to be put. And again, I'm going to sign in as a test. I will send. OK, we are test right now. And I want to subscribe to test one. Let's say localhost users. And I'm going to write here user ID. Let's check. OK, we are test. And I want to subscribe to this channel. Oops, I forgot to sub here. I will send. Now, oh, okay, I forgot here. Find by ID and update. We are pushing. And in the same way, I'm going to update here. Okay, let's try again. I will send. Subscription successful. And also, I want to subscribe to another user. Let's check. Test2. I'm going to paste and send. Let's check our user. I'm going to sign in again to see here. 
as you can see subscribed user user one and user two and if i sign in as a test one as you can see subscriber numbers one and again one perfect it works right now i want to fetch all videos of channels that i have subscribed let's create here one more request it's gonna be get subscribed videos or channels videos whatever localhost videos and it was sub or what let's check again okay sub by the way there is a typo here i hope everything is okay let's check i'm gonna send and nothing is here it's 200 but something is wrong of course i forgot a wait i'm gonna send and as you can see videos are here from second user from first user perfect but the mistake is as you can see there is a nested array here to prevent this issue i'm gonna use javascript flat method so i will say dot flat in this case let's try again as you can see it returns only one array and inside our videos perfect and also i can write here a sort method so we can see the newest videos first so i will say sort and i'm gonna write here javascript sort method b dot created at minus a dot created at if you don't know javascript sorting i highly recommend you to check on google it's not that complicated if i fetch again as you can see the latest video because we have created this later and other video perfect you can create other endpoints here like trends or random videos let's try actually get random videos random i will send of course it's going to return all of them that because our size is 40 let's make this one i'm gonna send video from second user the best video again uh, first user as you can see it's random so it works and what else we can do we can get videos by its tags or its title let's write here by the way we are not gonna need that we are just searching by its tags and title let's say search actually it's better naming let's create here i'm gonna copy this and i will say get by tag and search let's use them here get by tag and search okay if you remember in our video model we have tags array and it includes strings so basically we can create a query and take all those strings and we can write our condition we are gonna use express query let's say const tags and it's gonna be request query and let's say tags and if i write here console log and tags you are gonna understand better right now i'm gonna come here and say get by tag tags and localhost videos and tags and i want to write here a query how we are going to do this it's going to be a question mark tags equals 
let's say JavaScript, Python, C. If I send this, as you can see, all those queries are here. It's working like that. It's really easy and it's a really common usage. I'm sure you have seen this in many websites. So we are going to use it like that. But as you can see, they are not separated. To separate them, we are going to use JavaScript split method. I will say split. And we are going to split using those commas between them. Let's do this again. I'm going to send. And right now, as you can see, they are separated. So basically, I can look inside these tags, this array, and I can search for those items. Let's delete here. And I will say video find. And inside, I'm going to write my condition. We are going to look inside tags. And I will say in method. Basically, it looks inside arrays and checks whether a specific element inside this array or not. In this case, we are using these tags. Oops. Okay. And I'm going to write here a limit. Otherwise, it's going to return all videos. For now, it's not a problem, but in the future, when we add thousands of videos, it's going to be a problem. So basically, we are going to fetch only two any of them. Let's try. I'm going to come here and change those videos. We don't have any text. I'm going to add here. I will say JavaScript and one more. Let's say Python. I will update. And second one. Let's say JavaScript and C, I will update, and finally, third one. I will say C, and D. Let's try right now. I'm going to look for JavaScript and it's going to return just first and second one. As you can see, JavaScript, JavaScript. If I say Python, it's going to return only this one. Let's say C. Okay, perfect. And also you can write here C and D. And it's going to return this one and this one. And for other one, search video, I'm going to use query again. I will say const, let's say query, request, query, and let's say just q. Let's delete this and let's write limit. And let's say 40, for example because it's going to be a search page, so it can be more than 20. And I'm going to write here condition. Title will be the query which we write. But as you can see, this is our title. Even if I search for S and T, it should return this title. So basically, we are going to use rejects here. So I'm going to say rejects. It's really useful, guys. If you are using MongoDB, you are going to use this all the time. And I will say query. And also, I'm going to write here an option. And it's going to be I. Basically, uppercase or lowercase will be not important. Even if we write uppercase as T, it's going to find this video. And let me check. Okay, it looks nice. Let's check here. One more request. Get by query localhost videos search and Q will be let's say ST. I'm gonna send. Oops. 
search can't use option ah it's going to be options i'm sorry i will send again and as you can see st st actually all of them are best so it's going to input let's search for first and as you can see it's here it's that easy guys let's create quickly comments and after that we are going to apply all those requests into our react application i'm going to close everything here and open up comments i will say router post methods we are going to create of course it's going to be verify token we have to be logged in and it's going to be add comment let's create them export const add comment async request response next and try catch next and error okay i'm gonna duplicate this it's gonna be delayed comment and get comments we are going to get all comments of a video let's create them add comment delayed comment and get comments it's going to be a get method and delayed method of course we should indicate here any specific id and here video id of course i'm gonna delete this by the way i should import this import verify token from verify token okay let's create them it's really easy you already know how to do this i will say const new comment new comment and inside request dot body and also user id will be our id request user and id actually let's move this here and we are gonna try to save it i will say const saved comment await comment save and we are gonna return this response status send saved comment not comment is gonna be new comment of course we created here and that's all I think let's delete to do that of course we are gonna identify our user to do that firstly I'm gonna find comment wait comment find by id request parameters and id and also we are gonna find our video let's make this capital i'm gonna import them by the way don't forget that and i'm gonna write here the condition i'll say if request dot user id equal comment and id sorry user id it means this command belong to us we can delete it or if we are the owner of the video we can still delete this command we don't have to be owner i will say request user dot id equals video dot user id we are gonna delete it i will say await comment find by id and delete request params dot id let's send i will say status to 100 and i'm gonna say 
the comment has been deleted. And don't forget writing here else. If we are not the owner of the comment or the video, we are gonna return next create error 403. You can delete only your comment. And what about this? I will say const comments. We are gonna fetch all comments. I will say await comment dot find. We are gonna write condition and video ID will be request params dot video ID. Remember here. And finally we are gonna send it. JSON and comments like that. It's crashed. Let's try one more folder comments new request add new one. Post and I'm gonna choose JSON and I'm gonna add just description here and it's gonna be first comment that's sent of course we forgot video ID let's choose one of them this one video id like that i'm gonna send okay perfect this is our user id this is our video id and description awesome let's create other ones second comment third comment and I'm gonna use this video ID right now and try to fetch all those comments that's right here get all comments of a video I'm gonna paste it here and send as you can see all those comments are here perfect Okay, we finished our API. Right now we are gonna install our React application and we are gonna apply them there. Of course, time to time we are gonna come back here and fix our some mistakes. And also we are gonna add Google authentication. But for now, it's the ending of API. By the way, I realized that I forgot writing like and dislike functionalities. Let's check. Okay, as you can see, they are empty. Let's create them. If you remember, in router, we are passing in video ID. We can use it. And inside video model, as you can see, we have likes and dislikes arrays. So basically, when I like any video, I'm gonna put my user ID here. And if I already disliked this video, I'm gonna pull my ID out here from dislikes. And for the dislike functionality, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna add here and pull out here. Let's do that. I'm gonna open up user controller. First, I'm gonna take my user ID. Let's say const ID request user and ID. Let's take video ID in the same way. I will say video ID. And here, I'm gonna update this video. I will say await video dot find by id and update and i'm gonna pass here video id and i'm gonna push my id here but if i use push method even if i like this video before it's gonna push it anyway it means it's gonna duplicate my user id but i don't want to do that 
So instead of push, I'm going to use add to set method. It's a really useful method. It just makes sure that your ID is in the array only once. Even if you click the like button again, it's not going to add again and again. So here I will say likes, likes array and my user ID. And also if I dislike this video before, I'm going to pull out my user ID there. So I'm going to use pull method, dislikes and my ID. And that's all. Let's send a message. Response status 200 and JSON. Let's say the video has been liked. So I'm going to do the same thing for dislike. I can copy here and paste. But this time it's going to be dislike and it's going to be like. Let's try. By the way, I said user is going to be params, of course. And there is an error here. Let's check. OK, something wrong with try catch block. That because I forgot this try here. OK, perfect. Let's check quickly. I'm going to come here and create like and dislikes. users like and it's going to be video id to do that we can just check random videos here okay we can take this one and paste here that's sent the video has been liked i'm going to choose one more video get random we can choose this one and i'm going to make it dislike Video has been liked that because I forgot changing here. Video has been disliked, of course. Okay. Let's check those videos. I'm going to copy this again and I'm going to get this video. New request, localhost videos. And remember, what was that? Find and ID. I'm going to send. Okay, there is something wrong. That because I forgot changing here, it's going to be get video. Right now I'm going to send again. And as you can see, this is our video. And in the dislikes array, this is my user ID. I'm going to do the same thing for other one. Let's check. I'm going to paste and send. And this time, as you can see, this is my user ID. It's that easy. By the way, let's change this name, get a video. And what if I try to like this video again? Let's try. I'm going to come here. I'm going to change this name. And I'm going to paste here. And it's going to be like again. I'm going to send. It says video has been liked, but if we check here, as you can see, it's not adding my ID again. It's here only once. This is why we are using this functionality, add to set. Okay, it's ready, I think. If I forgot something, we will come back here and fix them. But for now, we are going to install our React app. I'm going to come here. If you remember from last tutorial, the design part of the application is here. I'm going to choose this one and I'm going to import this project to my VS code. To do that, I'm going to close here and create one more folder and it's going to be client. And inside this one, let me open one more terminal here and I'm going to go to client. Let me make this a little bit bigger and what I'm going to do is to import this branch. Its branch name is React Video UI. I'm going to come here and copy this link. I will say git clone. I'm going to use only one branch. So I will say single branch, branch and branch name here. Remember React Video UI and my link here. And finally, I will say dot. 
let's see what's gonna happen as you can see it's cloning our react app here if i check all those files are here but as you realize we don't have our libraries to install them i'm gonna use npm install or just yarn after that it's gonna include all those libraries here okay it's ready let's start yarn start and it's here perfect by the way youtube deleted our images here <laughs> but it's not important we are gonna import our own so what we are gonna do we are gonna log in and register but before i want to show you how we are gonna fetch data using express api this is our home page i'm gonna shrink this and i'm gonna close everything here so firstly what i want to do is adding my api url here i'm gonna add it as a proxy so we won't have to write it again and again i will say proxy and remember our url localhost port number and api and right now we are gonna use this proxy so we don't have to write this link again we are just gonna write our endpoints I'm gonna save and let's go to home page pages home page and as you can see there are many cards here right now we don't need them only thing we should do is to fetch our data remember we can fetch random videos first here I'm gonna create use state hook here and I will say const videos set videos and when we fetch data we are gonna set our videos here I will say use state and at the beginning it's gonna be an empty array and I'm gonna create here use effect that because whenever I refresh this page I want to run a function and this function will be fetching videos function so I will say use effect run this function whenever we refresh page and it's gonna run only once and I'm gonna create my function I will say const fetch videos it's gonna be async oops and I'm gonna need a library here to fetch our data we are gonna be using Axios let's open up one more terminal here and we can see better and I will say cd client axios i'm gonna show you this okay it's ready let's say const response axios is gonna be get method remember and i'm gonna write here my endpoint it's gonna be videos and random and that's all by the way it's not coming let's import quickly import axios from axios okay of course don't forget here await you can write here try catch block also if there's an error you can show it here but i don't want to show any error for now it's gonna make the video longer but if you want to you can create one more state here error set error and you can use here try catch block if there's an error you can set that error and show it here after this response i'm gonna set my videos response and data this data includes everything that api sent us basically all those random videos let's call this function here I'm creating a function here that because you cannot use async inside use effect like that as you can see it cannot be async that's why we are creating function and calling here okay by the way it's gonna be videos after that we are not gonna need any card here we are just gonna use one of them and I'm gonna cover this with my videos I will say videos and I'm gonna use map and for each video I'm gonna return a cart like that let's see I'm gonna save and as you can see there are three videos it's that easy guys 
But here, if you remember, we have explore button and subscription button. We are going to fetch different data using those buttons. So what I'm going to do is to go to app.js. By the way, if you didn't watch the previous video, it can be hard to understand because I'm not going to explain every piece of components here. If you didn't watch, I highly recommend you to watch it first and it's going to be much clearer. Okay, if you remember, we have an index root here. I'm going to create one more. It's going to be a home page again, but I want to give here a type prop and it's going to be trend. And I'm going to copy this. I'm going to create one more. It's going to be subscription. And for the normal index page, it's going to be random videos. Let's change them. It's going to be trends and it's going to be subscriptions. Okay, right now I can use those types here. I'm going to take as a prop and instead of random, I'm going to change this endpoint dynamically. Remember in our server, I'm going to open up videos. We have random trend and sub. We are going to use those endpoints. So we already passed here random trend sub. So we can use it directly. Of course, to do that, I'm going to use backtick here and I can write JavaScript. So I'm going to just say type. In this case, it's going to be our dependency. I'm going to write it here and I will save. Let's see right now. As you can see, nothing has changed. When I click here, we are going to go to trends page. Let's do that. I'm going to open menu. Let's shrink this a little bit more. If you remember, we are using link like that. React rather DOM link. So I'm going to copy this and paste for explore. And I'm going to wrap this. And it's going to be trends page. So I'm going to do the same thing for subscriptions. I'm going to paste my link and it's going to be subscriptions. When we click on this button, it's not going to work that because we don't have any user yet, but we are going to test it later. As you can see, their colors are different. To prevent this, I'm going to come here, choose both of them and I'm going to say color inherit. So it's not going to change the color. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to click here. We are in the trends page and our videos are here. Of course, we cannot see which one is most viewed, but after passing our video to those cards, you are going to see better. Let's do that. I'm going to go to home again and I'm going to write here a key first. Don't forget, if you are using map, you have to give here a unique key. What unique key we can use? We have video and their ID. So we can use it. And also I'm going to pass my video as a prop. So we can use it in the card component. Let's do that. I'm going to open card component. And I'm going to take this video. Right now we have video details. So I can delete here. It's going to be video dot image URL and video details. Let's write here video dot title and views here video dot views and created at date. But if I drag the use here video dot created at, it's not going to show us like one day ago, one month ago. To do that, we are going to need one more library. And I will say yarn at timeago.js. Let's install. Okay, it's ready. Let's import here timeago.js. And I'm going to import format function. We are going to see right now. I'm going to cover created at date. And we are going to transform into timeago.js. Let's see. 
as you can see zero views 18 hours ago title and image of course we don't have any image yet it's just a broken link but we are gonna add this don't worry but there is a problem here that because we don't have any user information here channel information this name and this image to do that we are gonna fetch channel information here we are gonna do exactly the same thing i'm gonna copy here and paste this time it's not gonna be videos it's gonna be channel or user whatever you say channel set channel i'm gonna import use state and it's not gonna be an array let's say empty object i'm gonna import use effect fat channel and i'm gonna import axios okay and this time i'm gonna use users endpoint that because it's a channel i will say find and i need to write here user id we already have video and inside this video we have user id we can use it video dot user id and after that we are going to set our channel here response and data and finally i'm going to call this function of course our dependency is video and user id whenever we change this user id it's going to fire this function again and again let's use this channel also remember this is channel image I'm gonna change it channel dot image and here channel dot name and let's see right now as you can see test test one test two and we don't have any image yet perfect it works if I open up MongoDB here and change those video views let's change this one it's gonna be a hundred this one will be let's say 50 and this one will be let's say one let's check right now our trend videos I'm gonna click here and as you can see first one will be a hundred fifty and one but if we go to home page as you can see it's different right now if I refresh the page it's gonna be changing that because we are fetching random videos let's refresh again as you can see it works like that I'm not clicking here because we don't have any user let's take care of this I'm gonna go to login page it was sign in page okay as you remember we have username password and email here let's create use states for them i will say const name set name use state hook and at the beginning it's going to be an empty string i'm going to do the same thing for others email and password but how we are going to change them we are going to use on change method so whenever I change this username input I'm gonna set my name state and it's gonna be event target and value I can do the same thing for others it's gonna be password username again it's gonna be email and password okay we have our data right now we are able to make an authentication api request for this button we are going to make login request we have username and password we can send them to do that i'm going to write here on click method and when we click on this button we are going to fire handle login function let's create i will say const handle login it's going to be an async function that because we are going to make a request and here i'm going to send my credentials but before i'm going to use here event prevent default so 
So even if I click this button, it's not going to refresh the page. I'm clicking, as you can see, it's still here. That's why we are using this function. And after that, try catch block. And I'm going to make a request. I will say const response wait axios. It's going to be a post method and my endpoint. And I'm going to pass my credentials. Remember, we are sending request and body. We are doing exactly the same thing here. We are sending name and password. Let's see if everything is okay or not. I will say console log, response and data. I'm going to open up my console here and I will say test and my password. I'm going to sign in. And as you can see, it's successful and it returns user information here. And we have subscribed to two users here. Okay, perfect. But how I'm going to use this data everywhere? It might be a problem that because we are going to use it in navbar here, in menu, and when we open any video page in the comment section, we are going to see our data. Basically, we are going to need it everywhere. To handle this problem, we are going to need a context API or Redux. Of course, you can use any other management tools also, but in this tutorial, we are going to use React Redux. I know for some of you, Redux is terrifying, but don't worry, we are not using old school Redux. We are going to be using Redux Toolkit, and you are going to see how easy to use it. Let's come here, open up sidebar, and I'm going to create one more folder here. It's going to be Redux. And inside this folder, we are going to create our Redux slices. What we are going to need here, we are going to need user. So I'm going to say user slice. Let's create user slice.js. And let's create Redux toolkit. I'm going to open my documentation, get started. As you can see, we are going to need this library. And also we are going to need React Redux. Let's say yarn add toolkit and react redux. I'm going to import them and let's see what we have here. And I wouldn't say it's the best documentation ever, but I will try to find out. There's a quick start here. Here, as you can see, let's open up JavaScript. Firstly, we are going to create this function. And after that, we are going to write here our initial state in our application. The initial state will be user null. We are not going to have any user. But when I click on this button, we are going to start fetching this data. And if it's successful, we are going to update that user. If it's not successful, we are going to show an error. So basically, we are going to have initial state and inside we are going to have user is fetching and error. Let's copy here. You are going to understand better right now. Initial state user will be null. I will say is fetching or loading, whatever you say. At the beginning, it's going to be false. When I click that login button, it's going to be true. And if it's successful or if there's an error, it's going to be false again. And finally, error. At the beginning, it's going to be false. If there's an error, it's going to be true. And after that, we are going to create our user slice. We are going to name it. It's going to be user. We are going to pass here our initial state, which we have created. And after that, we are going to write our reducers. Basically, it's going to be functions that we want to use. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to explain one by one. Let's paste. It's going to be user slice. Name will be user. Initial state. And our reducers. I'm going to delete them. But before, let me explain that. As you can see, there is an increment function here. Let me show here, actually. There is an increment function and it takes our state at the beginning. Remember, value is zero. Then we call this increment function. What it does is to increment this value by one. And it's changing this value. 
and this function is doing the same thing minus one and also we can pass here any specific number let's say we are calling this function and we are passing inside five and it adds this payload to our state dot value in this case it's going to be five when we call this again it's going to be 10 let's say we are calling this one it's going to be 9 and this one is going to be 10 again it works like that if you are not familiar don't worry you are going to understand let's delete them and my first reducer will be login start i'm going to take state i'm not going to write here action like here that because we don't have any action that payload we are just gonna start our login process so i'm gonna say state dot loading and it's gonna be true it was false but we are starting fetching it's gonna be true i'm gonna duplicate this this one will be login success and this one will be login failure if it's successful it means we have a user so i'm gonna write here action and i'm gonna update my user i will say state dot user is gonna be action dot payload as we did here in this case of course loading will be false because we are ending if there is an error loading will be false again that because we have a result and also error will be true so when we click here we are gonna fire this function if we have a user we are gonna fire this if there is an error we are gonna fire this function and let's say we have a logout function state and everything will be exactly the same here so we can use initial state return initial state user will be null again false and false or you can directly say state or if you want to you can say directly like that of course don't forget state and equals it's exactly the same thing okay but how we are gonna use those functions i'm gonna come here and export them i will say export const login start success and uh, failure and logout and we are gonna export them from user slice dot actions like that and also i have to export my user reducer basically this slice so I'm gonna say export default user slice dot reducer. Okay, we have our functions, we have our initial state, but how we are gonna use them? I'm gonna create here a store. And let's check. As you can see, firstly we are gonna import configure store and our reducer and we are gonna create a store here why we are creating store that because we want to use this user object in every component so basically we are gonna have a storage and when we want to we will be able to reach this user so let's create this I'm gonna copy it like that and paste here of course it's gonna be our user reducer let's delete here from user slice and it's gonna be user user reducer so basically we are gonna have a storage and under that we are gonna have a user which is this user and inside this user we have our initial state user loading and error so when we want to use this user we are gonna go to store.user.user actually let's change this name if I make this current user, for example, it's going to be much easier to understand. Let's change here and here. Okay. In this case, it's going to be current user. If you want to use this, 
store user dot current user. Okay, but how we are gonna use this store everywhere? I'm gonna open up index here, and I'm gonna wrap my application with Redux provider, and I'm gonna pass here my store. Let's do that. I'm gonna say provider. I'm gonna wrap my application and I'm gonna pass here my store. Store equals store. Like that. And this provider comes from React Redux. Let's import like that. Okay. Right now I am able to use this store everywhere in any page and any component. Let's save here and let's start firing our actions. Start success and failure. So I will say before starting, before fetching data, we are going to use login start. But to use that, we are going to need a dispatch function. So I will say const dispatch. And we are going to use use dispatch hook. It comes from React Redux. Let's dispatch our first action. I will say dispatch and login start. As you can see here. We are not passing anything, we don't have any payload. And after that, if fetching is successful, I'm gonna write here login success. And I'm gonna pass my user here. Remember how we are doing response and data. It's that easy. And if there's an error, just write here login failure. And that's all. If you want to, you can pass this error here and take this error as a payload action and update here. But I'm using just true false. It really doesn't matter right now. And it works like that. Let's try. I'm gonna open my app. If you don't have this extension, you can find it for Google Chrome and Firefox. Its name is Redux Dev Tool. If you search for it, you can install this extension. It's really useful. So I'm gonna write here my name and my password and I will say sign in and as you can see it fires login start first and after login success and it says current user is not null anymore it's this user and loading was true and it turned back to false you can see your action here this is our payload which we sent to login success action function you can see your difference, your state, as you can see, store, user, current user. But how we are going to use this current user in our navbar and menu? Let's open up. I'm going to close everything here and open up navbar. So we are going to use React Redux use selector hook. So I will say const current user. I'm going to use use selector. And I will say state, this is our store, remember, state dot user. There is a typo here, current user, okay. Let's import this. Use selector from React Redux. Okay. Of course, you don't have to write it like that. I'm just destructuring. If you want to, you can say current user state user dot current user but it's easier way i'm gonna use it like that and right now i can use it here and i'm gonna write here a condition let's wrap this link and i will say if there is a current user write here something if there is no current user show me this link let's say here user for now and as you can see, it's here. We can show user image, username, and also I'm gonna add here a button that we can upload a video. So I'm gonna delete here. And firstly, I'm gonna create here a user container. Of course, we don't have yet, but we are gonna create. And after that, I'm gonna create this video button. And we are gonna have avatar, which is user image. And finally, our username. So I can directly write here, current user, dot name let's create those components here i will say const user styled component and it's gonna be a div 
and I will make this display flex. They are going to be horizontal. And I'm going to say align item center. I'm going to give gap between them. And font weight will be a little bit thicker. And finally, remember we are using dark mode and light mode. So we are going to change its font color depending on our theme. It's going to be theme.text. They all came from previous lesson. And I'm going to create here const avatar. Again, style.image. 32 pixels. Height will be the same. I'm going to say border radius 50%. So it's going to be a circle. And let's give any background color here. So if there is no image, we are going to show this background color. Like that. Let's see. Okay, perfect. As you can see, our button user image, we don't have any image, and our name. So I can do the same thing here. If there is a user, I'm going to delete this section. Let's copy this use selector, and I'm going to open menu. Let's come here and import this selector, and use this current user. This login. And also, I'm going to delete this HR. Of course, they are in the same level. We cannot use them like that. We have to have any parent here. So I'm going to cover them like that. OK. So I'm going to write here my condition. If there is a current user, actually, if there is no current user, let's check. As you can see, it's not here anymore. Perfect. It's that easy, guys. What slice we need more? We are going to need video slice. That because when we click on any video here, let me stop this. We are going to see video page and we are going to have many functionalities like like the video, dislike the video, subscribe to the channel. Or if that video belongs to us, we will be able to delete it. So basically, we are going to need video slice also. Let's create. Actually, I'm just going to duplicate this and change the name video slice and let's say video slice name will be video and I'm gonna change here we are gonna take care of this later but I want to show you how we can combine them I'm gonna go to the store and here I'm just gonna say video equals video reducer of course I should import this like that but also there is a problem here that because as you can see our page has been refreshed and we don't have user anymore let's click again test sign in as you can see it's successful but if i refresh the page it's not here anymore let me make this page bigger a little bit okay so what we need here, basically we need to persist our user. To do that, let's search for persist. Use with Redux persist. It's a little bit complicated, I know, but this is what we exactly need. Let's import this library. Yeah, I'm at Redux persist and I'm going to copy here and paste here. And we are going to need this persist config. Like that. And as you can see, we are going to need persisted reducer. But it says root reducer, but we don't have any root. We are using our reducer separately. What we can do, we can combine them. I'm going to come here and say combine reducers. So I'm going to create here a root reducer. I'm going to say const root reducer combine reducers i'm gonna send my user reducer of course inside an object and video reducer it's exactly the same thing what we did here user user reducer video video reducer but we are gonna combine them it means we don't need here anymore we can use root reducer but we are going to persist them. As you can see, we are passing our root reducer here. Let's do that. 
And instead of root reducer, I'm gonna pass here persisted reducer. And finally, we have to use this middleware, otherwise it's gonna give an error. To prevent that error, I'm gonna write this also, like that. Don't worry about that, it's nothing important for now. And finally, we are gonna export this persistor. Of course, I will say export. And at the final, we are gonna create persisgate, and it's gonna cover our app, like we did here with provider and we are gonna pass this persistor let's copy this open up index file not this one client and i'm gonna wrap my app let's import them and persistor let's try right now i hope everything is okay i'm gonna come here and i'm gonna write test my password i'm gonna sign in okay we have a user right now i'm gonna refresh the page as you can see it's still there and if you open redux dev tool you are gonna see that our reducer is persisted right now it basically stores our user and other elements inside the local storage this is how we are reaching even if we refresh the page and also since we logged in we have a cookie here and it includes our access token. It means right now we are able to upload any video, comment to any video or fetch subscribe videos right now. I'm gonna click and as you can see there is no error anymore and this is all videos of the channels which we have subscribed. Remember we are test and we have subscribed to test1 and test2. And they have only one videos. It works properly. And by the way, I forgot showing how to log in using Google button. I wanna delete this user for now. And after that, we are gonna go to sign in page. Of course, we can create logout button somewhere here. I don't know. Let's go to sign in page again. And here I'm gonna add a Google button. To do that, I'm gonna go to firebase.google.com and let's get started. I'm gonna create a project, let's say video, I will confirm and continue. We are not gonna need any analytics, I'm gonna create project, it's gonna take a while. Okay, it's ready. And here I'm gonna choose build and authentication. And in this page, I'm gonna choose Google Provider and I will enable. Here, you are gonna choose your email address and save. Okay, it's ready. We can use it right now, but to do that, we are gonna need to install Google Firebase. I'm gonna add it here, yarn add Firebase. And after that, we are gonna initialize our Firebase application. Let's come here. I'm gonna choose web app. Again, let's say video app. As you can see, npm install Firebase. We have already done this. And after that, we are gonna initialize. Let's copy this. And I'm gonna create one more file here. And it's gonna be firebase.js. I'm gonna paste it. Let's delete those, those comments. Of course, I recommend you to put this API key in an EMV file, but for now, it can stay. Right now, we are gonna use Google Authentication. To do that, I'm gonna import one more thing here, import from Firebase and auth. And I'm gonna destructure get auth function, and I'm gonna create authentication here. I will say export const auth, and get auth function like that and also i'm gonna export this app let's say export default that because we are gonna use it when we upload any image or video of course we are gonna do this later but okay it can stay and we are gonna need one more thing here and it's gonna be google auth provider this is the provider that allows us to log in using Google button. So let's say 
export const provider and it's gonna be new Google provider like that okay we can use them in our sign-in page I'm gonna open sign-in and I'm gonna import it here auth and provider right now we can create a button and when we click on that button the Google sign-in page will show up here as a pop-up let's import that I will say import from Firebase authentication again and it's gonna be sign in with pop-up okay we can use it let's create our button here I'm gonna add one more or and between them I'm gonna create my button sign in with Google let's create here on click method on click and when we click on this button it's gonna fire sign in with Google okay let's create this function somewhere here I will say const sign in with Google okay let's use our pop-up sign in with pop-up and I'm gonna add here my auth which we have created in the firebase file and provider let's see how we are using it as you can see we have already done them and here after this process it returns us a result and this result includes our user information let's try I'll say then result and console log this result and if there's an error we are gonna catch it it can stay for now and let's see what's gonna happen I'm gonna save I will come back here and open up my console I'm gonna click here as you can see it opens this page when I click on my account as you can see there is a result here and inside there is a user and this user includes all those information my name email my image and others we are gonna use three of them display name email and photo URL okay I have my information right now I can add those information into my MongoDB let's create here of course it's gonna be async and I'm gonna say Axios post my endpoint Google we are not using sign in that because we are not using any password and I'm gonna pass here my information of course inside firstly we are gonna send our name is gonna be result user dot display name I'm gonna duplicate this we are gonna send our email and we are gonna send image email and what was the name photo URL and after that if everything is okay we are gonna again dispatch login success function so I will say then it's gonna return us a response it's gonna be our MongoDB user so we are gonna say dispatch login success and payload will be response and data of course at the beginning we can create login start and here if there is an error it's gonna be login failure okay let's go to our authentication route and as you can see there's a Google endpoint but we don't have any function yet let's create I'm gonna come here export const Google auth I will say async function request response next and we are gonna try catch and let's see what we are gonna have 
Firstly, if we already created a Google account, we shouldn't create new MongoDB account. Basically, we are just going to find this user and we are going to do exactly the same thing here. We are going to create token and we are going to send this token as a cookie and we will send our information. Of course, in this case, we will not have any password, so we can directly use user and document. Let's do that. Let's try to find out our user. I will say const user user model find one and I'm gonna find by email address because it's a unique address request body and email after that I will say if there is a user it means we have already registered before so we are gonna send our cookie and information so let's copy this token we are going to create new one and we are going to send our response like that in this case it's not going to be others it's going to be user dot document it's exactly the same thing but what if we don't have user it means we are going to register for the first time in this case we are going to create a new user I will say as const new user is going to be new user and we are going to pass here all our body and also I'm going to add here one more property and it's going to be from Google. If we check our user model, as you can see, we don't have yet let's create here and it's going to be easier to understand whether it comes from google or not so i will say from google type will be boolean and by default it's going to be false okay let's come back and after that i'm going to save this user const save the user it's gonna be await new user and save and finally I'm gonna do exactly the same thing I will create a token and send my user in this case it's not gonna be user it's gonna be saved user it's that easy guys if you didn't understand here I recommend you to watch this part again it's gonna be much easier there is nothing complex here and finally of course next error and that's all I hope I didn't make any mistake I'm gonna go to authentication root and call my function Google auth okay let's try I'm gonna open redux again and sign in with Google As you can see, login is success, but our current user is not here. Let's check. Okay, it's empty. Okay, I forgot here. Saved user. And I forgot here. Wait. And inside user, as you can see, password is required. I'm going to delete this. It's not going to be required. Let's try again. And right now it's working. Perfect. Current user, test llama, my email, and user image. Perfect. But this image is not here. Let's correct this. Navbar. As you can see, we don't have any image here. I will say source. It's going to be current user dot image okay perfect it works so even if i try to sign in again it's not gonna create new one it's gonna return the existing user let's see as you can see test test one test two and llama dev perfect of course here we already have a user we are not supposed to see this page 
and also you can create somewhere here logout button or you can create here a menu and a logout button and when you click on that button you can fire this logout action i believe that you can do this and what else we are gonna have let's close everything and open up video page here and we are gonna create a lot of functionality here firstly i'm gonna take the current user remember how we are doing this using use selector hook and also we are gonna use dispatch to apply our actions firstly what i want to do is to fetch a single video when i click this button if you remember we are going to test page but this time we are going to change it let's go to cart page and i'm going to change this link it's not going to be test anymore it's going to be our video id of course i'm going to use backtick quickly and i will say video.id like that of course inside curly brackets like this okay let's try again i'm gonna go back and i'm clicking this and we are going to this page as you can see this is our video id and we are gonna take this id and fetch our video to do that we are gonna be using use location hook i will say const path and i will say use location it comes from react router dom and let's see what we have console log path of course there is an error that because in our recommendation section here we have a lot of cuts but we don't have video id what i want to do is to remove them for now and here okay as you can see this is our location and we have here path name and it includes video and our id so if i separate them this video section and id section and if i take the second part of this string we are gonna reach this id so i will come back and i will say path name and i'm gonna use split slash and i'm gonna take the second item basically i'm gonna create two use states here i will say const video set video it's gonna be use state it's gonna be an empty object one more and it will be channel let's create our use effect and i will say const fetch data async function try catch block and inside i'm gonna fetch two data first one will be video i will say const video response await axios it's gonna be get videos and i'm gonna write here my video id that's right here backticks and video id and it's gonna be our path and one more is gonna be channel response and i will write here users find and we have video here and inside this video remember we have user id and after that i'm gonna set my states i will say set video video response dot data and one more channel response and here it's gonna be channel like that and in this case our dependency will be path as you can see i'm gonna paste it here like that and i'm gonna use this fetch data here okay but i'm not gonna use drag this video if i do that i will not able to like dislike or subscribe to the channel of course i will but it will not show up here immediately i have to come here and refresh this page each time when i make any action to prevent this instead of use state i'm gonna create a video slice we have already created here 
I'm gonna come here and create current video and I'm gonna store my video here instead of use date. So basically I'm gonna delete this and this and let's create current video and I'm gonna change here. Let's say fetch start success and failure and I'm gonna delete this logout. Let's change them also. Fetch like that. In this case, we are going to need one more use selector here and it's going to be current video. State, state and video. Okay. Right now, after fetching data, I'm going to update my video slice. Let's write it here. Actually, I will say dispatch fetch success and I'm gonna pass here video response and data. In this case, we have one more dependency and it's dispatch. Okay, right now we can use this current video. I'm gonna copy this. It's gonna be title, current video dot title views. Created at date. So I'm gonna use format again, like that current video and create it at date. What else? There is a like here. I'm gonna say current video likes. Remember it's an array so I can take its length. And I'm gonna put here a question mark that because at the beginning it's not gonna load probably these likes. And other things will be channel. Let's change them channel dot image channel name subscriber number channel dot subscribers and description but remember this is our video description not channel description so I'm gonna say current video and description let's see okay they are here perfect but we don't have user. Let's check again. Okay, that's because I forgot here writing data. Okay, perfect. We don't have any avatar. So let's take care of those likes and subscription button. I'm gonna write my condition there. For this like button, I'm gonna check whether my user ID inside this likes array or not. I'm gonna do the same thing for dislike. Let's say current video dot likes if includes my user id which is current user dot id it means i already like this video i'm gonna write here some other icon if i didn't like before it's gonna be this icon let's put this icon here quickly okay and i'm gonna do the same thing here i will say if current video dot dislikes includes my user id it's gonna be this icon if i didn't dislike before it's gonna be this icon okay let's write like and dislike functionality and you are gonna see better i'm gonna come here and say on click method and handle click or handle like let's do the same thing for dislike handle dislike okay let's create them const handle like async await axios it's gonna be a put method and I will say users like and video ID current video dot ID let's do the same thing for other one dislike and dislike let's see I'm gonna click here of course we cannot see here that because we didn't handle this with Redux but if I refresh this page Okay, the problem is here. 
it's updating our user not video I made a mistake let's choose this video from second user I'm gonna like and refresh as you can see it's here but I cannot see this immediately here to prevent this I'm gonna create an action let's come here and say like we are gonna take state and action and I'm gonna create a condition here firstly I'm gonna check whether I already like this video or not if I didn't I'm gonna add my ID inside this likes array and if I dislike this video before when I click this I'm gonna delete my user ID from here let's do that you are gonna understand better right now I will say if state and current video and likes includes my user ID in this case I'm gonna send this as a payload so I will say action dot payload it means I didn't like before so I can add my user ID which is action and payload so I will say state dot current video dot likes and push action payload I'm adding my user ID inside this array by the way if you are not using redux toolkit you cannot use push method you cannot mutate your state but thanks to redux toolkit we can do this easily like that and if I dislike this video before I'm gonna remove my user ID from dislikes state current video dislikes and I'm gonna use splice method and I'm gonna find my user IDs index to do that again state current video and dislikes I will say find index and I'm gonna find my user ID user ID equals action dot payload after finding my user ID I'm gonna delete it like that if you don't know splice method you can just google it for five minutes you are gonna understand here better and I know it looks a little bit complex but actually it's not if you didn't understand just watch it again I just add my user ID into likes and I removed my user ID from dislikes so I can do the same thing for dislike I will say dislike in this case I'm gonna make likes dislike dislikes like like that let's export them and try I will say like and dislike okay I'm gonna come here and I will say dispatch like and I'm gonna send my user ID current user dot ID let's copy this and paste here and it's gonna be dislike like that let's try I'm gonna refresh the page I'm gonna dislike as you can see it's not here anymore if I like it's here awesome it works and if I refresh the page as you can see it's still here that because we have added this into our MongoDB it's that easy guys so I can do the same thing for this subscribe button firstly I'm gonna write my condition into video page as we did for like and dislike I'm gonna come here and I will say if current user dot subscribed users includes this channel ID it means I subscribe to this channel in this case I'm gonna write here subscribed if I didn't I'm gonna write here subscribe let's see as you can see I've already subscribed this channel if you remember I'm the test and I've subscribed to test 2 and test 1 that's why we are seeing this but I'm gonna implement this to Redux also so we can see it here immediately so I'm gonna open user slice and I'm gonna write here 
subscription. I'm gonna take state action. I will say if state dot current user dot subscribed users includes action dot payload, which is channel ID. I'm gonna delete channel ID from here. Subscribed users dot splice method. I'm gonna find the index, find index and channel ID. equals action dot payload and I'm gonna delete if I didn't subscribe before and when I click this button I'm gonna add this channel ID inside subscribed users I'm gonna do the opposite so I can come here and say else if I didn't subscribe before I will say subscribed users push action dot payload let's export this like that i'm gonna come here and right here on click method it's gonna be handle subscribe or sub let's create const handle sub async function firstly I will say users, subscribe, and channel ID. And after that, I'm gonna dispatch my action, and it's gonna be subscription here. And as a payload, I'm gonna send channel ID with underscore. But I want to check this endpoint. Did we create for unsubscription also or not? I'm not sure. Users. Okay, there is unsub too, so we should consider this too. So it means I'm gonna write one more condition here. Actually, it's gonna be exactly the same. Current users, subscribe users, I'm gonna take here and paste. If it includes channel.id, I'm gonna call unsub API request. If I didn't subscribe before, it's gonna be sub. And after that, we are gonna change it here. Let's see. As you can see, unsubscribed. I'm gonna refresh. It's still here that because in the MongoDB we are not subscribed. I'm clicking again and subscribed. Perfect, it works. So let's change this video. We were using YouTube video, but I'm gonna delete this. I'm gonna create here video frame. And its source will be current video dot video URL. Let's create this using style components. I'm gonna say const video frame it's going to be styled dot video. I will say maximum height 720 pixels. It will be 100%. And I'm going to say object fit. And cover. If we check here, we are not going to see anything that because we don't have any video URL, but it works. So what about those comments? Let's open up comments quickly. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. I'm not gonna waste any time and paste here. I'm just gonna explain. I just created comments. Use state here at the beginning, it's an empty array. And I created use effect. And we are fetching all comments of a video using video ID. Of course, we didn't send any video ID here. Let's send quickly comments video ID is gonna be current video dot ID. We can use it here video ID 
And right now I can use it. As you can see, there are many comments here. We are going to use only one of them. Map comment. I'm going to wrap this and I'm going to delete others. And I can push this comment here. Of course, we need a key. Don't forget this key. Let's say comment.id. It's a unique key. Okay. Right now, I can take this comment. By the way, this is going to be our current user image. Let's do that. I will say current user dot image. Of course, we are going to need use selector and we are going to fetch current user like that. Okay, as you can see, we don't have any comment yet. I'm going to open up comment component and I'm going to take my comment here. It's going to be comment dot description. Let's check other videos. Maybe we added somewhere here. Not this one, maybe this one. Okay, as you can see, first comment, second comment, and third comment. Perfect. And also we can change this name and image quickly. You already know what we are going to do. We are going to fetch user. We are going to do exactly the same thing here. I will say channel or user, whatever you say. And we are going to fetch our user like this. Let's create use effect quickly. Channel response or just response. Of course, it should be inside a function const fetch comment async like that. I'm going to import Axios and it's going to be comment and user ID. In this case, it's going to be our dependency. I'm going to pass it here and I'm going to call my function like that. And after that, finally, I'm going to set my channel. It's going to be response and data. Let's use it. Channel dot name and its image. Like that. As you can see, all those comments belong to us and we don't have any avatar. Okay, perfect. So far, so good. And only thing we should do is to create new video. When I click on this button, we are going to show here a pop-up and we will be able to upload image, video, its title, its description, whatever else. To do that, I'm going to open navbar quickly and we are going to use this video button. I will say on click. When we click this, we are going to open the pop-up. To do that, I'm going to create here a use state. I will say const open set open is going to be use state hook at the beginning is going to be closed i will say false and when we click on this button it's going to be true set open is going to be true okay right now we have this boolean according to this open variable we can show our pop-up let's create here upload.jsx I'm going to create my function and I'm going to use it here. Let's use under container actually that because we are going to use position absolute. So I don't want to destroy any component here. I'm going to say if it's open show me upload component. And I'm going to send set open here that because inside upload component we will be able to close this set open 
and let's take it here. Firstly, I'm going to create here a container. And inside we are going to use a wrapper. That because our container will be full screen and this wrapper will be something like this, a small box. And inside I'm going to create a close component here and we will be able to close this pop-up. Let's say X is going to be our closing button. I will say title, upload a new video. And I'm going to create the rest, but before, let's take care of them. I'll say const, container, styled components. It's going to be a div, wrapper, close, and title. Close, title, and it's going to be h1 tag. Let's make this full screen. I'm going to say with 100%, height 100%, and position will be absolute. I will say top 0, left 0. So it's going to start from here and contain all this screen. And I'm going to give a background color, let's say black. When I click this button, as you can see, it's totally black. But I want to give some opacity here, something like that. Okay, perfect. We can see the background, but not that much visible. So let's center our wrapper here. I'm going to say display flex, align item center, and just Y content center. What about this wrapper? I will say 600, height will be the same. My background color will be our team color, BG lighter, and text color will be team dot text. So it's gonna be white on the black team and black on the white team. I'm gonna give some padding. It's gonna be display flex, but I'm gonna make it vertical. So I'm gonna use flex direction and it's gonna be column. Let's give some gap between them. And I'm going to make it position relative. That's because we are going to use close button, this button, and it's going to be position absolute. And I'm going to move it somewhere here. Of course, I've zoomed in. The normal view of our website is something like that. But I'm just going to zoom in for viewers who watch this in laptops or mobile phones. Okay, anyway, so I'm going to come here and say position absolute. I'm going to give top and right is going to be 10 and cursor will be pointer. And when we click on this button, we are going to close this pop up. Let's do that. As you remember, we have set open here. I'm going to say on click. I'm just going to close this pop-up like that. Let's try. I'm going to click. As you can see, it's not here anymore. I'm going to click here. Perfect. And I'm going to align this title, text align center. Okay, awesome. And I'm going to add here some inputs. Let's say const input styled input. I'm going to give some border and color using my team and border radius will be 3 pixels, padding will be 10 pixels and background color will be transparent. Otherwise it's going to be white. We don't want to do this. Of course we didn't add. Let's add here. Input something like that. Our first input will be type file and it's going to represent our video file when we click this we will be able to choose any video so i can say accept only videos so i can write it like that in this case we will not be able to upload any other file it's going to be only videos let's create one more input here it's going to be 
text and I'm gonna give placeholder and let's say title I'm gonna create one more input but it's gonna be a little bit bigger so instead of input let's say text area and it's gonna be for our description text area it's gonna be exactly the same let's use it description uh, placeholder will be description and I'm gonna give row here let's say eight lines so it's gonna be a little bit bigger okay perfect and one more input here and it's gonna be our video tags let's say separate tags with comma and finally one more file and it's gonna be for our thumbnail images so in this case it's gonna be image like that and finally a button here const button it's gonna be exactly the same button that we created before you are gonna see right now so I'm not gonna create from scratch I'm gonna come here and say upload like that let's give some small labels here before those files I'm gonna say label image and label video let's create quickly I'm gonna duplicate this label is gonna be label and I'm just gonna decrease font size it's gonna be 14 pixels like that okay it looks much better and clearer right now we are gonna upload videos using firebase I'm gonna go to console again and here I'm gonna choose storage I will say get started we are gonna use it in the test mode so we will be able to write and read I'm gonna choose any location here and done it's gonna be ready during this process let's create our use states what we are gonna have I will say const image set image it's gonna be use state hook at the beginning let's say undefined or null or whatever you want I'm gonna do the same thing for video so whenever I add here any video I'm gonna set my video here let's do that I'm gonna say on change when I change file here I'm gonna update set video and it's gonna be event target let me close this sidebar target files but we are gonna upload only one file so I'm gonna choose first one and I will do the same thing for image set image oops like that what else we are gonna need we can show uploading process somewhere here like 10%, 50%, 100% and when it's done we can write here uploaded successfully to do that we are gonna need two more use states and I'm gonna say image percentage and video percentage like that and at the beginning they are gonna be zero when we start uploading we are gonna increase them and what else we are gonna have our inputs here like title and description I will say title description and one more it's gonna be text empty string empty string and empty array okay we are gonna update them let's come here for title I'm gonna say on change method set title it's gonna be event target and value and same thing for description 
I can do the same thing for these tags, but I don't want to do this directly. That because we are going to separate our items. To do that, we can use split method. So let's say on change and handle tags. Let's create. const handle tags and I'm gonna set tags event target value but I'm gonna split them using comma of course we are gonna need event here okay we have all of them only thing we should do is to upload our image and video so whenever I add here any video, it's going to directly start uploading and for image it will be the same. So basically we are going to need two use effects. I will say use effect. And the dependency will be video and other one is going to be image. Whenever we change video, it means whenever we add any file here, it's gonna fire this function and it's gonna be the same for image so basically I can create here upload a file function let's say upload file and we can take a file and we can call it inside our use effects I'm gonna send the video and here I'm gonna send the image okay but what we are going to write inside this function? Basically, we are going to use Firebase uploading process. Okay, there is a full example here. As you can see, we are going to need some functions here. Let's import them like that. And inside, firstly, we are going to call our storage like this. And we are going to create a storage reference. Let's copy this and paste here but as you can see it provides here a folder name we don't need that we are just gonna need here file name but if we do that whenever we upload a file with same name i don't want to make any conflict to prevent this i'm gonna create my own file name let's say const file name to do that we can use new date we are gonna create name using this date get time plus file dot name so it's gonna give us a unique file name so i can use it here and what else as you can see upload task and here the process is beginning let's copy here and if there's an error i'm gonna leave it like that of course we don't have default here let's write as you can see there is a progress here and it shows us how many percent we have uploaded so in this case we are able to set this image percentage and video percentage to do that of course we are going to need one more prop here and it's going to be let's say file type or actually we can say url type that because inside our api video as you remember we have video url and image url we can directly update them here in this case i'm gonna make something different i'm gonna actually delete this description and title and i'm gonna make them inputs set inputs and at the beginning it's gonna be empty object basically is going to include everything related to our video like title description video url image url so we don't have to set our states like that we can directly call here a function let's say handle change i will do the same thing for description and i'm gonna give here a name and it's gonna be let's say title and it's gonna be description let's create this function and you are going to understand better i'm going to come here before this text actually const handle change and i'm going to set my inputs i'm going to take the previous inputs 
and I'm gonna return the new one. Whenever we change our description or title, we are gonna update inputs. I will say, take the previous items and add here one more item and it's gonna be event target name and its value will be event target dot value. Basically, when I try to change its description, it's gonna take the previous items, title and description, but it's gonna change description to its new value. Why I did this? That because I want to add my image and video URL here. Basically, we can add them into these inputs quickly and it's gonna be much easier when we try to create new video using MongoDB. Let's delete this data and instead of console log, I'm gonna set my percentages. So I can write here a condition. I will say URL type. If it's image URL, it means we are gonna update image percentage. It's gonna be this progress. If it's not, it means we are gonna set video percentage. Like that. Okay, let's check here what else. We are not gonna handle these errors. And finally, it's gonna give us, as you can see, this URL. And we are gonna add it into MongoDB. Let's copy this and paste here. If it's successful, again, I'm gonna do the same thing. Let's come here and copy this and paste here. And in this case, it's not gonna be target name, it's gonna be our URL type and this link. Download URL. Let's use those percentages here. For this file, I'm gonna write here a condition. I'm gonna say if video percentage is bigger than zero, show me something. If it's not, it means we don't have file and show me this input component. So what I'm gonna write here, let's say uploading video percentage like that so i can do the same thing for other one for image like that and image percentage okay let's try by the way there is a mistake here that because we are trying to upload video but we don't have any file yet so I'm gonna write here if there is a video call this function and in the same way if there is an image call this upload file function I'm gonna open this pop-up let's choose a file here as you can see I cannot choose this video I'm gonna choose this one but it's not uploading, there is something wrong. That because we have to pass here our application. So I will say app. And if you remember, in Firebase, we are passing this app by default. So let's import. I'm just going to say app from Firebase. And that's all I think, by the way. It's going to be like that. And also, we didn't pass here our URLs, video URL, and image URL. Let's try again. I'm going to open up our pop-up. Choose an image. Okay, it's not here again. And this time, I forgot here, image percentage. Let's choose. Oh, as you can see, it's a hundred percent. That's right here, percent also. Okay, perfect. Right now, let's check our storage. I'm gonna refresh. As you can see, we have the same image, but different names. There are two images that because I refreshed the page and it uploaded again. 
and it works perfectly. What about this? As you can see, this time I can choose only videos. Let's choose. As you can see, percentage is moving like that. But it's not flat. Let's round this percentage. So I'm gonna use math, round and progress. Let's see again, as you can see, this time, perfect. And after uploading image and video, finally we are able to send it to our DB. Let's create here, handle upload, const, handle upload, it's gonna be async function. Again, I'm gonna say prevent default, I don't wanna refresh the page. And let's use it in our button. I will say on click method and handle upload. Right now we have everything we need. So basically I'm going to say const response, await, axios, and post method, videos. And I'm going to pass my inputs and my tags. And after that, if it's successful, we are going to close our pop-up, set open, it's going to be false, and I'm going to say if response and status equal to 100, of course you can use try catch also, but I want to show you something different here, and I want to be navigated to home page, I'm sorry, video page. So to do that we are going to use use navigation hook, let's create here const navigate is gonna be use navigate hook from react router dom and using this navigate we will be able to go to our video page i will say video page and new video id which is response data and id of course it's videos not video so I'm going to do exactly the same process. I'm going to upload and we are in this page. As you can see, this is our video and this is our title and description. Awesome guys, it works perfectly, but here, as you can see, we don't have any controls. I cannot start this video or make some configuration. I'm gonna open video page. And where is our frame here? I'm gonna say controls. In this case, we are able to start this. Perfect. It works. I can make this full screen. Awesome. So what else we need? We need recommendation sections here. If you remember, we just comment them out. I'm going to open them. By the way, I can create new component instead of this. I don't want to make everything in this video component. So I'm going to come here and say Recommendation. My function. And remember, here, as you can see, it's flex2. I'm just gonna delete this and paste it here. And of course, it's gonna be container. And I'm gonna use it here. So, how I'm gonna fetch related videos here? Basically, I'm gonna take tags and according to those tags, I'm gonna fetch videos. I'm just gonna drag the paste here. You already know what we are doing. I just created videos, use effect, and when we run this recommendation component, we are gonna fetch some videos. And if you remember, we have tags and point and we can send our tags by using express query after that we can use those videos 
video and I'm gonna call here cart component and don't forget key video dot ID and video will be video so how we are gonna send those tags here in this video page we already have the video and we already know which tags this video is using so it's really easy to send only thing I should do is to come here by the way I'm gonna import recommendation component here like that and I'm gonna send tags and it's gonna be current video dot tags it's that easy and also remember we are using type here and it's gonna be small okay let's choose this one by the way it looks pretty nice I'm gonna choose this one and as you can see related videos are here okay perfect and the last thing we need is searching videos when we write here any query and click on this button by the way why it's black I'm gonna open navbar and I'm gonna move it here into parent okay perfect when I click on this button we are gonna open search page and we are gonna see all those videos I will say new page search.jsx quickly container it's gonna be start components dot and it's gonna be display flex so I will say flex wrap it's gonna be wrap and I'm gonna give some gap between them so let's create const videos set videos it's gonna be use state hook at the beginning it's gonna be an empty array and quickly I'm gonna create here use effect we are gonna fetch our videos I will say const fetch videos it's gonna be async function and response equals await and we are gonna make our API request to do that again axios and get method and remember which endpoint we have here we have search and in this controller video controller as you can see we are selecting a query and according to that query we are sending maximum 40 videos so I will say videos endpoint search and I'm gonna write here a query how we are gonna do this let's go back to navbar and I'm gonna create here one more use state and it's gonna be our input what we are writing here basically let's say query just q set q at the beginning is gonna be an empty string and whenever we change our input we are gonna update this I will come here and say on change and it's gonna be set query it's gonna be event target and value and when I click on this button this search button we are gonna be navigated to search page so I will say on click and to use navigate we have to use here use navigate hook I will say const navigate is gonna be use navigate from react router DOM in this case we can use it right now here and we are gonna go to search page and also we can send our query here so I will say q equals of course I will use backtick again and just q whatever inside our input okay right now we are able to use this endpoint it's exactly the same endpoint here 
in our videos search question mark q and any title here so we are gonna use directly this search string so i will come here to do that we are gonna use again use location hook i will say const query use location hook and search it's gonna give directly this string so we can use it here I'm gonna say just query and after that we are gonna set our video state I will say set videos it's gonna be response and data let's call this function and here as you can see we have a dependency and it's gonna be query so let's use it here it's gonna be a container and inside videos map and for each video we are gonna call our card component I'm gonna give unique key here video dot unique ID and I'm gonna send video let's see I'm gonna write here JavaScript for example I will search Oh, okay I forgot creating search page in the application of course I will come here and one more path and it's gonna be search I will say search and I'm gonna delay it here I will write here JavaScript actually we are searching just titles not text I'm sorry so I will say awesome I'm gonna search and as you can see it's here let's choose other one the common name as you can see best best and here I'm gonna write here best and it's gonna search and fetch all those videos perfect okay guys that's all I think Please consider that it's just a tutorial, I'm not providing you any complete application. If there is any mistake, any error, just calm down and use our Discord or Facebook groups, we are gonna fix them. Of course there are many features are missing like logout button or any complex error handling, but try to find out the solution is gonna be a really good challenge for you to improve your skills. If we can't find anything, just write in our groups. There are many people there helping each other. I highly recommend. Okay, that's all. I hope you liked it. If you learned something new today, please like the video. You can support Lamadev by joining the channel or using the link in the description below. And you can help me to create new videos just like this. And I hope I will see you in the next tutorial. Goodbye.